grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent or change his mind. Has he said, and he will not do. I want you to look at your neighbor and ask them that question. Say, has he said, and will not do. Too much space. Say, has he said, and will not do. And then he says, oh, has he spoken and will not make it good? Ask your neighbor, has he spoken and will not make it good? Behold, I receive a command to bless. He has blessed and no witch can reverse it. Romans 8. Romans 8. Romans 8. If you grab this word, it will change everything that is going on in your life that needs to change. Romans the 8th chapter. Romans the 8th chapter. Romans 8. Reading in verse number 18, the Bible says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to his purpose. Lift up your right hand. Father, 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 tonight speak through me. Lord, let the voice that you use through me be as the voice of many waters. Let the words that I speak, Father, let them touch the lives of people. Let the things that I say be the very oracles of God. Let my words be as powerful as they were in Genesis chapter number 1. When you said, let there be light and there was light. Let the things that I speak forever change the lives of your people. And let these words leave an indelible mark in the lives of your people. That your name would be glorified and hell in turn would be horrified. Have your way tonight. Speak through me, Lord God. And we promise to give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' precious name, somebody say amen. I want you to look at your neighbor and prophesy to them and just say after this, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Say after this. Say it again. Say after this. Life has a way of dishing out many blows. Many, many blows. It's just the way life is. Hallelujah. And if we don't look at these things or dig deep in these things, um, about life will be frustrated. Life is not a straight line. Neither is it a circle. Hallelujah. Life is not even fair, to be frank. Hallelujah. Sometimes you find yourself in a place of despair, a place of discouragement. What is discouragement? Discouragement is when your courage has been taken. To be discouraged is to be dispossessed of your courage. And you find yourself fearful rather than faithful. You feel like throwing in the towel. You feel like lifting up your hands in despair and saying, what is this all about? I give up. Is this all there is to life? I'm tired. I'm frustrated. When will things change? When will I get results, Lord? Are you really there, Lord, after all? After all, no man has seen God. Hallelujah. And sometimes we begin to accept the unacceptable. <laughs> we begin to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. And those 
who debate about our faith begin to mock our faith. For your life is supposed to represent God and glorify him. Hallelujah. And then we get into all sorts of complaints. Which really complaints are devil praises. You miss that. Complaints are really devil praises. When you praise God, you praise him. When you complain, you praise the devil. I want that to sink right in the card of your conscience. In the center of your mind. Before you open your mouth to complain again, remember you are giving the devil praise. And when you give him praise, he will show up. And he will do more things to praise himself. Hallelujah, church. I learned that despair is sin. It is sin. And yet life can throw you some blows and you begin to despair. And you begin to doubt the very essence of God. You begin to doubt the scriptures you read every day. And if you don't have somebody strong on your right or your left side, you'll be left for dead. Hallelujah. And there are people under the sound of my voice who are going through all sorts of conundrum and quandary. Difficulties. Oxymoron kind of situations where you are being perplexed by life. Hallelujah. And you sometimes you look at your neighbor and you judge them. But you don't understand that their own problem is idiosyncratic. <laughs> don't judge me because my problem is not like yours. You don't know what I've been through. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, life can be tough. Look at the other neighbor and say, life can be rough. Because sometimes in life, a mountain seems insurmountable. Hallelujah. You, you, you think you can't scale the mountains. You think your things will not change. And sometimes you think you're the only one going through your go-through. But I'm glad it's a go-through and not a go-to. You didn't get that. I said it is a go-through, not a go-to. Uh, sometimes you look at somebody's situation and you judge them. You judge them out of where they are. But God judges me according to where I am going. And I'm so glad that the problem I'm experiencing right now is not my destination. It's only but a lay-by. I wish somebody came to church for real today. I wish somebody who says, Pastor, I need a word from God. I need a change in my life. I need God to speak something in my life that can get rid of this despair and put me back on track. Ah, am I talking to the right people today? Uh, maybe I should have just put a mirror in front of me and begin to preach to myself. Uh, today, I don't care who's here and who's not here because this message relates to me. I can talk to myself. I've been to hell and back. Yeah, I know what the devil looks like. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So today, if I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to me. Am I here tonight? Are you here, church, tonight? Look at your neighbor and say, things have to get better. Oh, they can't get any worse than this. I've been through so many things. They can't get any worse than this. Uh, things cannot get worse than this. I, I've been through the good. I've been through the bad. I've been through the ugly. I've been through all sorts of situations. But the good news is I'm still here. I'm still here. You see, when the devil is preaching his gospel of bad news, he begins to tell you your, your problem is permanent. But I have news for you. It's temporary. There's nothing that cannot change. Ah, uh, life is such that the future, the, the, the present, will always give way to the future. Yeah, I wish you heard that. I wish you caught that. I said the present will always give way to the future. So these light afflictions, which are only but for a, mom, a moment, cannot be compared to the glory that is to be revealed. Your life is a glorious life. I said your life is a glorious life. I'm talking to you from eternity. I said your life is a glorious life. Do you know the kind of prosperity God has for you? The Bible says I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. For a future and a hope.
Somebody say a future and a hope. Oh, talk to me, church. Say a future and a hope. Tonight, if you don't get anything else from me, I want you to get patience. Get patience. Because we, we through faith and patience inherit the promises. Uh, some people have only run with the message of faith. But after a while, faith gets to despair. Because you give up and you say, why am I believing? But when you have both faith and patience, you have to inherit the promise. I don't know about you, but I always tell the devil, I don't mind waiting. Because when you don't mind waiting, you don't have to wait very long. But those who don't want to wait, never get anything. Somebody say, I'm patient. Uh, say, I'm waiting. Say, I'm still here. Come on, say, I'm still here. Tonight, if you don't get anything else, I want you to get hope. Because we serve a God of all hope. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We wouldn't need God if all our situations were hopeful. We are in hopeless situations. So we need the God of all hope. So that we can walk in hope. Say I'm walking in hope. Uh, somebody's going to name their child hope. Say I'm walking in hope. Say don't backslide because of what you're going through. It's temporary. Hallelujah. The thing that I learned from God. Is that my situation does not change who God is. But my God can change what my situation is. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I said my God can change my situation. But my situation does not change my God. Because sometimes we look at things and say, how is God going to change this? Why is God not changing this? Is God really God? No, your situation cannot change your God. But your God can change any situation. Even if what you are going through, you don't have power to change it. You know somebody who's power, who has power. His name is El Shaddai. The God that is more than enough. Let me tell you, your God is more than enough to change your problem. Turn these monitors down. Your God is God enough to change any situation. I said that situation that is difficult for you. The Bible says, is there anything too difficult for the Lord? Tonight, we want to take everything we are going through and hand it over to God. It's a casting your cares kind of service. When you begin to tell God, I can't handle this, but I know you can. This is too much for me, but not for you. The Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 30 verse 5, Weeping may endure for a night it may endure for a night in other words weeping has a has a time frame it has to end at some point it can't remain the way it is i said it has to end at some point it may endure for a night a whole night he's not talking about uh, from 6 uh, p.m to 6 a.m no night is a season there are people who have been weeping for a season they've been crying for a season things have going been going bad for a season until people begin to describe you by your situation the woman with the issue of blood the man with the issue of money the guy with one shoe the sister with one dress they are defining you by your night situation but i want to make an announcement to you joy is coming may i announce your joy may god give you reasons to rejoice david said rejoice and again i say rejoice i speak in the realm of the spirit may god give you things to rejoice about may god give you things to rejoice about things that will bring joy in your life in the name of jesus because after this it has to get better i said it has to get better things can only get better i prophesy a better life in your life i prophesy a better marriage i prophesy a better house i prophesy a better car i prophesy better financial liquidity i prophesy better customers better connections better 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 i speak that upon your life it can only get better i'm just clearing my throat somebody say it can only get better <laughs> say it can only get better you see why pastor why would you look at me and you, you might not even know what i'm going through and you say it can only get better it's because i know the one who promised it's not only that i have the promise i have the promiser of the promise i might not know what tomorrow holds but i know who holds tomorrow 
His name is God. He is God all by himself. Beside him, there is no other. You can't compare him with anybody else. He's incomparable. He's indestructible. He is my God. He is your father. He sits up high and looks down low. There's nothing impossible with him. There's nothing he can do. There's no patient he's ever lost. There's no battle he's ever lost. There's no one to compare him with. He is God all by himself. The maker of the heavens and the earth. The other day, he got frustrated with what he created. He he destroyed it and he started again because he is God. He is the one who promised you. How can he fail to give you a husband when he gave you the heavens and the earth? He is God. He is God. I said he is God. How can he fail? How can he fail? It's like asking, it's like expecting Mercedes Benz to fail to repair a, a suspension. They are the ones that created the car. They are the ones that started it. They are the ones that even wrote it down on paper even before it was reality. How can they fail to fix it? How dare you doubt that your God can fix your problem? How dare you lose despair? How dare you look down and think God can't change it? What is that problem that cannot change? Who are you, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? Who are you, O sickness, before our God? Who are you, O poverty, before El Shaddai? My God is an awesome God. I, don't, I told you, even if you are not here today, I can put a mirror and just talk to myself about my God. He is God. He is powerful. He is my sustainer. He holds me up. He is my God. I trust in him. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses some trust in politicians some trust in MPs but I trust in the name of the Lord for the name of the Lord is a strong tower they that run to it they are safe when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him tonight under the anointing we raise a standard against every problem you are facing against every witchcraft against every wizardry we raise the standard tonight poverty we are raising the standard hardship we are raising the standard sickness we are raising the standard I'm telling you devil we are coming after you with everything that we have we are coming after you sickness we are coming after you disease we are coming after you we are not just going to sit down and quit no the devil is a liar we trust in our God somebody say three times he is God and because he promised I don't focus on my problems. While you look not at the things that are seen. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16 to 18. But at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are seen are eternal. Temporal meaning subject to change like a temporary teacher. When the real teacher comes the temporal one. is done away with your problem is temporary. I said your problem is temporary. Don't focus on that problem is temporary. Your situation is temporary. I'm telling you it is changing. It is changing. It is changing. As sure as I'm standing here today. Your situation is changing. Somebody shout it's changing. Oh, come on, talk to me. Say it's changing. You see, your history does not determine your destiny. Don't judge me by where I came from. I might have come from the not not not, not just the desert, but the backside of the desert. But I'm gonna become king like David. I'm telling you, don't look at me while I'm going to face Goliath and make pronunciations and make declarations upon my life because Goliath is coming down. Even after Goliath comes down, I still have to face Saul and his sword. I have to face Saul and his javelin. But I'm gonna duck the javelin, and after this. I'll become a king. There are people that are here. After this, you are entering into your kingship. I pronounce your kingship today. I said, I pronounce your kingship today. In the name of Jesus. I remember a man called Saul. Please sit down. I remember a man called Saul in the Bible. Saul lost his donkeys. He was a nobody. He was from the least tribe. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But when he met up with one man of God, just one encounter with the right man of God, I said one encounter with the right man of God can change your life. He met a man of God called Samuel. The man of God anointed him and he came, he became a, a man, who not only a man, but he was now a king. Sometimes you even doubt of your own ability. You doubt the possibilities in your life. You doubt the things that God has said about you. But let me tell you, this is the service when it changes. Forget the other services. I said, this is the service when it changes. 
This is the first day of the best days of the rest of your life. I wish somebody came to church for you. I said it's the first day of the best days of the rest of your life. I remember Abraham was having a discussion with God. And he was saying, God, I need a child. I need a child. And God began to speak to Abraham. God spoke past the child. He says, you shall be the father of many nations. You didn't hear me. God, I need rent money. You shall own a block of flats. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about the flats, Lord. <laughs> I'm talking about now. No, God doesn't deal with your now. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. God doesn't deal with your now. God deals with your future. And the future will take care of the now. If you're going to become a father of many nations, obviously having one child is not an issue. So don't look at your barrenness. Don't make conclusions based on your barrenness. So he said to Abraham and Sarah, you shall be father of many nations. Do you know how many companies you have in the realm of the spirit? Do you know the kind of plans God has for you? I'm telling you, your current financial status is a joke compared to what God has in store for you. But you have to embrace it. You have to believe it. Despite what you are going through, you have to proclaim it. You have to declare it. You have to decree it. And you have to believe it. Keep believing. Because the devil wants to steal your faith. That's all he wants to do. He wants to take away your faith. But I'm telling you, I'm holding on to my faith. I might lose money, but I'll hold on to my faith. I might lose cars, I'll hold on to my faith. I might lose resources, but I'll still hold on to my faith. Because when I have my faith, I can get anything. Why? Because faith is the only currency with which you can trade everywhere in the world and in heaven. Keep holding your faith. Keep grab on, grabbing your faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? I remember a man called Moses. He was wanted for murder. Everywhere Moses went, you can imagine, Moses' face was, he had posters and not a poster of a conference. Moses was an poster, Wanted, dead or alive. Pharaoh's looking for you. Do you know what it means for Pharaoh to be looking for you? But can you imagine, after that same Moses had an encounter with God, he went back to face his Pharaoh. There are people here under the sound of my voice. Your relatives don't even know where you live. You are afraid of the, them discovering where you really live. But after tonight, you're going to have such an anointing that you're going to go back and face every Pharaoh and say, by the way, God says, let my people go. Even after the wilderness, he still had the audacity to go back to Pharaoh and face him and tell him, my God said, let my people go. Can you imagine a man called Solomon? He was a bastard. But he went, Bible, it's a Bible word, don't look at me like that. Solomon was a bastard, but he came from bastard to billionaire. That's the kind of God that we serve. You can come from being a bastard to becoming a millionaire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not your past that matters. It's your future. It's your destiny. It's the plans that God has for you. Not the plans the enemy has for you. Stop talking about the plans the enemy has for you. Oh, this is painful. That is painful. Oh, come on. Stand up. Don't be a spiritual sissy. And begin to believe in your God. And say, my God is more powerful than whatever it is that I've gone through. Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? I'm reminded of a man called Joseph. I'm sure you can imagine while he was in the pit. Many of you would not have survived the pit. But Joseph, he survived the pit. It was not just a pit. It was a pit he was thrown in by his brothers. Can you imagine that kind of pain? Get last week's message. Hated but still blessed. Joseph was in a pit. And at one point, he found himself being lied to. Or lied about. By Potiphar's wife. He eventually found himself in a prison. But after this, he found himself in a palace. Somebody say after this. Say after this. <laughs> Come on, say after this. You see, the reason why I'm saying after this is because you're still going through it. God takes you through the wilderness. Are you hearing me? Say the wilderness. Oh, I taught you this morning that the Holy Spirit himself led Jesus into the wilderness. He led Jesus into temptation. 
There are things that you are going through right now. You don't like them, but you're still going through them. In the kingdom, there are such things called whether you like it or not. You know why you go through some of those things? Because some of the things that are on you are not allowed in the promised land. So if God has to take you through a school of humility, because pride is not allowed in the promised land. Hallelujah, church. God can take you through a dying place. There can be no crown without Gethsemane. Say Gethsemane. Say Gethsemane. Say Gethsemane. You see, sometimes it's, you go even past Gethsemane. You go to the cross. Then you experience the pain of the cross. Being crucified. There are scriptures that we ignore. I die daily. We don't want to identify with Christ's death. But we want to identify with his resurrection. But people don't understand, pardon, that it is the death and the burial that makes the resurrection more powerful. It is the darkness that makes the light more beautiful. It is the poverty that makes prosperity more enjoyable. It is the loneliness that makes being married so blissful. And yet we want the light without darkness. We want the sunshine with no rain. We want the gain with no pain. It's not the way it is in the kingdom. You're trying to write a new book. And it's not authorized by God. Don't you understand? You had to go through the wilderness. But for God's sake, don't die in the wilderness. Don't die in the wilderness. Don't give up in the wilderness. Don't cave in in the wilderness. Don't quit where you are. It's always too soon to quit. I wish somebody got that. It is always too soon to quit. Don't lift up the white flag. Don't throw in the white towel. Don't quit. Don't capitulate. Are we here, church? Say, I'm not going to quit. Say, I'm not going to quit. Say, I'm not going to quit. Because after this, there's something on the other side. Can you imagine dying before you discover what's on the other side? I refuse to die before I discover what's on the other side. I refuse to die before I see what's on the other side of the elections. I refuse before I see what's on the other side of my business. I refuse to die before I see what's on the other side of my failure. Hallelujah. And our God is a God of contradictions. I remember Mary and Martha were frustrated. Jesus, if you were here, our brother would not have died. And there Jesus shows up. Looking all important. The funeral is over. The burial is over. Lazarus clothes have even been shared. And there Jesus shows up. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. And I'm sure they're saying, this guy, they're going to see he's a joker right now. Sometimes God wait, waits until it looks too late. I, I wish he didn't. <laughs> I wish he always came on time. I wish he came to give me the money before the problem. But sometimes he's the God of the 11th hour. Sometimes he waits until 11.59. Don't quit. I don't know who I'm talking to. But don't quit. It might be tough. But don't quit. The doctors might have written some powerful report, but don't quit. I said, don't quit. I said, don't quit. I said, don't quit. Don't shut down that life support machine. I decree, don't quit. And don't faint either. Hallelujah. I'm reminded in the Bible of a man. The Bible says that this man was born blind. He was born blind. He was now a man. 
born blind. Let's assume he was 25 years old. 25 years of blindness. No vision. And when he came to be healed, the disciples asked the question. They said, who sinned? This man, his father or his mother, that he should be born blind. And Jesus said, neither. That scripture is powerful. He said he was born blind that the glory of God might be revealed. There are things you have gone through for the sake of the kingdom. You see, Lazarus was used as a guinea pig in the kingdom. There's no book of Lazarus. <laughs> but there's a time in the Bible where it says Lazarus just sat at the table with Jesus after his resurrection. He was sitting there as a testimony. You will soon be a sitting testimony. That you can go through this and this and this and that and not die. I said you are a testimony in the making. You are a living epistle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It might be tough, but God is going to get the glory out of it. Somebody say he's going to get the glory. You see, when you're going through problems, I want, you, I, want, I want to teach you something, church. You need to learn to speak to your problem about your God. I don't know about you, but I have conversations with the devil where I say things like, you're a liar. You are a loser. Because you see, if you don't speak back to the devil, he's not going to stop talking. You are a former champion. You are finished. I'm destroying you. Come on, church. So you have to learn to speak to the devil and tell him, do you know who I am? Do you know who my father is? Do you know who my brother Christ is? Do you remember what he did to you? Do you remember what he took from you? He took from you the keys to death, hell and the grave. He whipped you after he left the cross. He went to the underworld. He whipped all your demons. He destroyed you. He took your power until he gave me the power. And he says, all power is given unto me. And when he tells you your future, is non-existent. Begin to tell him of his future. Begin to tell him he will end up in the lake of fire. Begin to tell him he will burn with his demons. Begin to tell him that he has no future. Begin to read the book of revelations to him until he is the one who gets stressed. <laughs> tell your neighbor, I'm going to deal with the devil because I'm coming out of this thing. I'm coming out of this thing. I might not be the first person to do certain things. But the Bible says that the first shall be last. And the last shall be first. Say I'm coming out. Say I'm coming out. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I see the cloud the size of a man's hand. There's been a drought. But I see the cloud the size of a man's hand. It might not be the full rain yet. But the cloud the size of a man's hand is coming. Like Peter, you have told all night and caught nothing. But after this, you are about to catch a big fish. I release that upon somebody's life. In the name of Jesus. In the book of Psalm 66 verse 12. As we went through fire, we went through floods. But we are coming out into a wealthy place. I'm telling you the problems you've experienced. You're not coming out with nothing. You are coming out with something on the other side. I decree upon your life. You are coming out with something on the other side. You are coming out with resources. You are coming out with a breakthrough. You are coming out with a testimony. Somebody shout my testimony. Say my testimony. Say my testimony. He's on the other side. I think you can't talk about after this without talking about Jesus. Jesus was sent to his own. His own received him not. Have you ever gone to a people that did not receive you? You see, I only wear suits for TV. But I, I like my jeans. I like my blue jeans. Hallelujah. I, I, I like my chinos. I like my, my big shirts. 
Expensive big sheds. Uh, it might not be a suit, but watch the label. <laughs> watch out with the label. Uh, and, and sometimes, you know when you go to another country and we get off the plane with my wife, they hear about this great apostle, this man of God who speaks and things change in the financial realm. And there I show up with jeans. And a big matching shirt. And they say, man of God? And I say, yes, that's me. <laughs> and they begin to make conclusions. And I always get excited. Because when I get the microphone, thunder begins to happen. When I speak, God will begin to back it up. I like coming from the back. I like being the underdog. I like being written off. I can imagine after Jesus was killed on the cross, the demons must have had a party. Hell was celebrating. They have said, we've finished with this Jesus nonsense. But they did not know that after three days, he would rise from the ashes. He would rise from the dead. I decree upon your life, you are rising from the ashes. You are rising from the dead. They wrote you off, but you are rising. I said, they wrote you off, but you are rising. They'll be surprised to see you and say, is this the man that we thought was dead? I decree upon your life a resurrection anointing. And as if that was not enough, after Jesus was raised from the dead, he went up to heaven in a limo service called cloud service. The clouds came and picked him up and they took him back to glory. And the Bible says he's seated in heavenly places. He's seated on the right hand of the Father. And when he got there after 10 days, he released the Holy Ghost. That's the kind of Jesus that we serve. He is such a mighty deliverer. And he's here tonight. He's your deliverer. Whatever you are going through, sometimes you don't know the right prayer. You don't have the right words. All you need to do is shout Jesus ah when an accident is about to happen sometimes you just need to shout so after this he was given a name above every name do you know the kind of name you're going to have some of you don't understand what you're going through what you're just doing is paying school fees ah you missed that uh -huh. someone's thinking of invoice <laughs> he goes well, no 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 no. you are paying what is called life school fees after you pay school fees you qualify are you hearing what I'm saying after you've got one or two scars you qualify you don't qualify to be a star until you have a scar that's why Jesus he showed off his scars when he came from the cross he was saying, I've been through some things. I can't stand people who've been through nothing. They judge you. <laughs> How can a real Christian find himself in a hospital when he has the Holy Spirit? Greater is he. <laughs> Wait until one... <laughs> Uh, when arrogant demons get a hold of him and deals with him, it will humble him. I like people who have been to hell and back. I like people who have suffered. I like people who have been tried. I like people who have been tested. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The problem with many of today's youth is they've not been through anything. They complain about everything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We want strong kind of Christians who can go through some things. Tell your neighbor, I'm going through some things. But I'm coming out on the other side. Come and say, I'm coming out on the other side. You can't talk about after this without talking about the prodigal son. Can I talk to some prodigal sons tonight? People who have made mistakes. I like people who have made mistakes because they tend not to repeat them. I like people who have touched the fire. They tend not to play with fire. <laughs> but talk, to, talk about fire to somebody who hasn't, play, who hasn't played with fire. Uh, they will be very interested in the fire. So I like people who have made a few mistakes here and there. Besides, God never used anybody in the Bible that didn't make mistakes. Go and check it. He never used anybody who never made mistakes. 
Do you not know that more than two-thirds of the Bible was written by murderers? Oh, you don't believe me? Moses was a murderer. He wrote the first five books. Paul was a murderer. Two-thirds of the New Testament. David was a murderer. He killed a man for a woman. But yet he wrote the Psalms. And yet he's called a man after God's own heart. How dare you judge me because of my mistakes? Who judged you because of your mistakes? We should take your mistakes and put them in the newspaper. Tell your neighbor, don't judge me. Oh, they might not know what you have done, but just tell them, just don't judge me. Say, don't judge me. God is not through with me yet. <laughs> uh, he ain't done working with me. And I know he hasn't finished working with you. And so, so, so the prodigal son, he did all sorts of things. Party, party. Party over here. Party over there. <laughs> I was listening to a song the other day. And my girls and I, we party from 6 p.m. <laughs> to 6 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's the prodigal son right there. Look at your neighbor and say, I know you used to party. Yeah, some of you are still partying right now. Uh, but we ain't going to get into that. We're not going to prophesy on you today. And so the prodigal son, he made some mistakes. He lost some money. Can I talk to people who lost some money? Can I talk to former champions? Can I talk to people who used to... Uh, uh, <laughs> I was talking to a young man the other day uh, for fear of victimization. I will not say who it is on the microphone, but I was talking to a young man <laughs> and, 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 and you know, he, he was talking about the era and he says to me, he says, man of God, and I said, tell me young man, when some scan up, you can go Cape Town, because Cape Town, Dubai. <laughs> And I said, that's the prodigal son right there. Hallelujah. Can I talk to people who blew money? Oh, you're not going to talk to me tonight. Can I look at your neighbor and say, did you blow some money? <laughs> Can I talk to my fellow mates that used to be in the casino? Oh, come on, all the gamblers. Wave your hand like you just don't. Said the prodigal son. Said the prodigal son. And it's easy for us to judge the prodigal son. How could he do that? And yet you've made some prodigal mistakes of your own. Come on, talk to me. And he didn't just end there. He went with the woman. Oh, then there's silence in the house. And blew his money on the women. Don't you know that the women finish the money? And when the money is finished, they move on to the next brother. Oh, you don't hear me. Uh, somebody's doing some prodigal living right now. Look at your neighbor and say, I hope you ain't. Uh, mm, uh, mm. Say the prodigal son. <laughs> say the prodigal son. And finally, he found himself living at number one Pigsty Avenue. <laughs> Life can make you change your address. Say prodigal son. Come on, say prodigal son. Say prodigal son. But that's what I love about about my God. I'm glad that God is not like the elder brother. <laughs> I'm so glad the elder brother is not the one who saw him coming afar off. He would have come to meet him. Look at up. You come back to my father's house after you finish half our money. How dare you? But our God embraces us. Even when we've done wrong, he embraces us. 
Do you know? Even if I'm a drug dealer, I'm still his drug dealing son. He was still called the prodigal. In other words, there's still a chance to go back home. After all my prodigal living, I'm still his son. After all my misbehavior, I'm still his son. Even if somebody turns into a homosexual, he's still God's son. Never write people off because they're still the children of the Most High God. Are you hearing me, church? Are you hearing me, church? Are you hearing me tonight? I want you to think of that person that you've written off. He is still a son of God. And after all this prodigal living, he was still invited back to the palace. So he moved from pigsty to palace. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says, God will perfect everything that concerns you. I know your life is not perfect right now. But your God is about to perfect it. He's about to change it. He's about to change. I know you can't give your neighbor the details, but just tell them God is about to perfect it. Oh, come on, tell them it's not perfect, but it's about to perfect it. Hallelujah. It has to get better after this. You know, one thing that will make things better is if you learn to praise God during your trials. Learn to praise God during your temptations. Learn to praise God during your troubles. You need to learn to give God what is called a crazy praise. What is a crazy praise? It's not a normal praise. It's not a normal praise. Because a normal praise is when God has done something for you. But a crazy praise is a praise that has faith built inside it. It means that before God does something, you're already praising him. So you're putting him under pressure to do what you're praising him for, which he has not yet done. And he says, how can they praise me for a car? And yet they are still walking on feet. Angels, give them a car. Oh, God is so addicted to praise. I remember the psalmist saying, and he says, if God had a weakness, it would be for praise. God loves praise so much. He said, if you and I don't praise him, the stones will rise up and praise him. He's a God who needs praise. Praise your way out of trouble because your praise confuses the devil. Hallelujah. After the devil has thrown his best shot, you need to praise him. After he has taken away your foot, Go on a fast. Oh, somebody just say praise God. For one minute, I want you just to begin to praise him. Open your mouth and begin to praise the Lord. As you are praising him, you are coming out. As you are praising him, things are changing. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. I decree as you praise him right now, as you lift him up, as you lift up his holy name, angels are being dispatched. Things are shifting. Things are changing. Praise him tonight. Praise him. Praise him tonight. You are moving from pain to glory. As you praise him tonight, you are moving from hardship to headship. As you praise him tonight, you are moving from losses to gain. As you praise him tonight, your mistakes are being turned to miracles. As you praise him tonight, your poverty is changing to plenty. As you praise him tonight, your season is changing. As you praise him tonight, peace be still. Your storm is over. As you praise him tonight, he's moving you from death to resurrection. As you praise him tonight, your frustrations are turning to celebrations. Praise him again. Praise him again. Praise him with that understanding that whatever you're going through, he's changing it. He is changing it. He is changing it. You might have gone through the fire, but he's changing it. You might have been going through the storm, 
but he's changing it you might have been going through losses but he's changing it there might have been the death of a loved one but he's changing it you might have been going through disappointments but he's changing it you might be tired and frustrated but he's changing it you might have been fired unjustly but he's changing it you might be discouraged but he's changing it lift up your right hand let me close I speak over your life three months of uninterrupted testimonies three months of uninterrupted testimonies I release angelic assistance upon your life I decree healings and deliverance promotion on every side these enemies that you see today you shall see them no more forever the anointing will manifest upon your life your glory will be revealed your destiny must be fulfilled you are growing from today every prophecy over your life must manifest contracts are being signed money is coming divine contracts are coming business partners are coming new shops are opening welcome to the promised land welcome to the promised land the land filled with milk and honey welcome to the promised land in the name of jesus if you believe it clap your hands tonight you are about to enjoy a new season come on praise him praise him praise him tonight I prophesy a sudden change upon your life. Things were tough, but suddenly, 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 he's the God of the suddenlies. He's the God of the suddenlies. Just for two minutes, begin to pray and begin to talk to God about everything you need him to change. Come on, talk to him about those things. We know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. Destiny